that it's easy to be overwhelmed with how much you love us. And how cool to have a sanctuary full, full of people declaring that truth, that you love them. Um, and so we just take a moment and we just want to offer our love back to you. And we do that through our time and through our talents. We do that through our money, right, as a way that we can worship you and that we can, we can show you our love. God, I, I pray that you would take these gifts and that you would multiply them, that you would allow us to make an impact right here in this community with our kids and our students and our young adults, with our families, with our parents, with our marriages. God, I, I just pray that you would help us make a huge impact for you here, but you'd also help us to make an impact around the world. God, we want to be serving you, not just here, but everywhere. So help us to pass your love on to those around us. In your name we pray, amen. The month of May is an incredible month around here because there's <clears throat> all sorts of things happening for all ages. Um, first thing, if you've never been to Plymouth at the Pines, we want to encourage you to head up to Covenant Pines. It's a great introduction to camp to your family, a great way to get to know some new people. If you're a senior, there's a special event at Northwestern College coming up. That sounds really exciting. Students, we have our end of the year luau coming for both middle school and high school. Um, and then I would love to invite you to save any of your stuff for our garage sale. Uh, we do a garage sale every year and all of our proceeds, all of our funds help our missions all around the world. So if you have items, we'd love for you to save them so that you can bring them in then. We have two special events to highlight. Coming up first is our Reconnect, and it's an event where we bring in a speaker for both our middle schoolers and our high schoolers. Jake Veneta is the motocross chaplain, and he's going to spend an hour with our middle schoolers and then an hour with our high schoolers. But it's designed for parents to come with their students. So students, bring your parent that night. It's going to be important. Um, and last but not least, Serve Day is coming in just like a month, and we would love for you to be a part of that. If you've not heard about Serve Day, it's an opportunity where instead of having normal church service, we send our people out to be the church in our community. Watch this video with me to hear more about it. Serve Day is Sunday, June 2nd here at Plymouth Covenant. It's an opportunity for all of us to get up out of our seats. Serve Day is Sunday, June 2nd here at Plymouth Covenant. It's an opportunity for all of us to get up out of our seats and take our faith out to the streets. I've got things that I thought would fill my heart up, sitting on top, winning, but that ain't winning. I've chased all the good stuff, all the bad stuff, stuff the world calls living, but that ain't living. Hey, hey don't be. Hey, hey, don't be nothing without you. I don't want to have it all right. My story, any way I want. Everything will just fall apart if you wait it. I don't want to get my way. No, I don't want to run this thing. Cause I know it all ends the same if you wait it. Don't miss an opportunity to sign up now to get the spot that you'd love to fill. Hope you'll save that date and plan to serve with us. So today we get to highlight our confirmation students and confirmation here at Plymouth Covenant is a two-year discipleship process that's really all about connecting. We want our students to connect with God. We hope that they connect with each other and that they connect with the life of our church. Uh, this fun started yesterday. We had a banquet with all of their parents and mentors um, and then we came in upstairs and we had 21 of our students who were baptized last night who shared their testimonies on this stage, um, declared their relationship with Jesus and their desire to follow him. So it's been pretty exciting. And then at 2 o'clock is when we will have our official confirmation service. So if you don't have anything to do and you want a little bit more fun you can come on back. But one of the things we ask all of our confirmation students to do as they come to the end of their confirmation process is to write either a paper or create a project that answers the question, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? So I'm gonna invite a couple of students up right now who are gonna share their projects with us tonight.
Hi, I'm Eliana Leach, and for my confirmation project, I made care packages for children at the Children's Hospital. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do. I had ideas from, from blankets for babies in the NICU to helping the homeless. But then I realized that all of my ideas had to do something with serving others in need. So with the help of my family and friends, I decided I was being called to help brighten kids' days at the Children's Hospital. It was an amazing and eye-opening experience buying everything from, everything from stickers to crayons to books to blankets. And realizing that I have so much and these little things that I'll be putting in these kids' um, packages will bring them joy and happiness and that realize that other people are thinking about them. I had so much fun getting to serve these kids that were going through a tough time that it didn't feel like a project or something I had to get done. It felt like that I was something to do just for the fun of it. God really showed himself to me when I was putting all the packages together. He showed me how blessed I am and that I need to share my joy in others who may not be receiving it. Through doing this project, I realized that one of the talents God's given me is to be able to serve others without feeling like it's something I have to do, but rather than something I want to do. I made five packages, one being right here, this is a girl's one, and I made three boy, girls and two boys ones. And we brought them to the hospital and the staff were so overjoyed and excited to give the gifts to the kid. I wanted to be a blessing to others, but I was the one that received the blessing. Um, so for my project, I did this, and the first one I did was the fruit of the spirit. And Galatians 5.22 to 5.23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So we as Christians, we try as much as we can to incorporate this into our lives. Um, the second one I did was the Holy Trinity. And Ephesians 4.4 4 through 6 says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over and through all and in all. Um, so this is kind of the um, foundation of our religion. And Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. So when you accept God into your heart, you're trusting him that he will take care of you. And um, the last one I did was the cross, and I made some lights for this. And so this kind of shows the light of the cross, and I named it Child of God because, yeah. So howdy, um, my project is like the Last Supper, but it's like a timeline. She is all uh, future and the other guy is like, this is so, like, he's like, Adam. Um, so I made this because my dad suggested it. Um, I made a whole picture in my head. Um, I was gonna blow everyone away, but I failed the first one because I made a big mistake. And I tried the second time, but the line art was ruined. And I made this one, and honestly, I was so disappointed once I finished it. Like, how can I fail this, and how can I fail myself, and how can I fail everyone else, is what I thought. Plus, I didn't actually think about the meaning, because I was so worried about failing everyone. And I quite literally never wanted to see my project ever again. Until maybe yesterday, when I saw, um, when I, when I saw, like, other people's projects, and, um, I felt super inspired. So I, I thought of it a bit after reading other people's, um, paragraphs. And um, this is what happens when I don't really think about my project's meanings. Then I realized Jesus' disciples had literally betrayed him on so many levels, yet God had still loved them and accepted them. Then I realized that, yeah, maybe I did fail, but God still loves me, and he's the one that will always love me even when everyone else doesn't.
I'm going to pray. And then we do have one more project. We had a student who got sick, and so she has a video that we're going to watch. But I'm going to pray uh, for these students, and then we'll watch that video. So, Father God, we just thank you for our confirmation students. We thank you for the ones uh, up here on the stage, but really all of them who had courage and got up, and they presented, and they talked about the difference that you have made in their lives. God, would you just seal that? Would they just never forget your deep love for them? And as they continue into their young adult years, that they would just have a solid foundation on truth that you love them that you care about them and you have a plan for their life and that it's your desire that they would walk with you each and every day in your name we pray amen you can be seated and you i'm going to invite you to watch this video being a follower of jesus to me means to love like jesus loves and how he loves others first john 4 7a says dear friends let us continue to love one another for love comes from god one way I found to love others in a practical way is to feed them. Something as simple as a batch of cookies or brownies can bring so much joy to a person. So I combine God's love with my passion for baking to bless others. My mom is a mentor at Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge. We figured out that food is a gift to many of the women in the program, especially home-baked desserts. When my mom's mentee would come over to our house, I'd make desserts for her. She told us she appreciated it so much because it was comforting food. After my mom's mentee graduated from Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge, we continued our visits to Grace Manor, where many of the women in the program live. We thought it would be fun to bless more of the other women in the same way we blessed my mommy's mentee, so I started baking. Every Monday and Saturday, I baked some treats to bring to Grace Manor. Every time I went, I ended up making more. I started out baking for the two women that we knew through my mommy's mentee and share the extras with the other women in the house. Before we knew it, all the other women in the house were coming up, for us for, coming up to us for treats, conversation, and hugs. It's funny how God works. He turned baking into relationships. He cemented that by allowing the women to give back. This made the relationship a two-way street. One of the women found out that I was learning to play guitar and offered to teach me how to play. It made our relationship and visits even better. It made it so she can see how much she has to offer the world, too. I used to think that I was too young to be used by God. But this experience has shown me that God can use anyone, any talent, to show his love to others through me. Just look what cookies did.